The werewolf is one of the most iconic and terrifying of all myths and legends. And while many are safe in the belief that they are just a fantasy, there are documented cases of real life werewolves. In fact, there is even a medical term for it, clinical lycanthropy. If it sounds hard to believe, then keep watching. But before we get started, don't forget to click the notification bell for this channel. As always, hit those lights, sit back and enjoy. Giles Garnier. Giles Garnier lived a secluded forest life in 15th century France. One day, he fell in love with a woman from the nearby village of Dole, and she joined him in his forest abode. However, Giles found his new life challenging, as he had always lived off the land and fended for himself. Providing for his new wife was not something he was used to. It wasn't long before children began to go missing from the nearby village. Each night, a new set of parents would wake up to find their child's bed empty. And one morning, the mutilated remains of a 10-year-old boy were found in the woods. At first, the authorities believed they were dealing with some kind of ferocious animal, but then, during a combing of the forest, the search party came across a gruesome scene, a dead child. Crouching over the body was at first thought to be a wolf, but torchlight revealed it was Giles. After being arrested, Giles confessed to the killings, stating he had abducted four children to feed himself and his wife. He claimed that one night while hunting, he was approached by what he thought was the devil, who gave him an ointment that would allow him to transform into a wolf, and that's when the killings began. Whatever Giles' motivations, his crimes were all too real, and he was burned at the stake in 1873. Manuel Blanco Romasanta Born in 18th century Spain, Manuel Blanco Romasanta had a very strange upbringing. He was raised a girl up until the age of six, which is believed to have led to a number of issues with his mental health and sense of self. Manuel grew up to live a life of further misfortune. His wife died at a young age, and this prompted him to become a traveling salesman. He struggled to make a living, and when he found himself at the mercy of debt collectors, he fled to Portugal to start a new life as a guide, navigating people through the treacherous mountain passes. Although suspicion soon fell on him when several women and children he had been guiding mysteriously vanished. An investigation found that Manuel had in fact murdered five people, including a 12 year old girl in order to sell their belongings and even more disturbingly to sell soaps he had made of their fat. During his trial, Manuel stated he was afflicted with lycanthropy, believing he had committed the murders while in his wolf form he was sentenced to life imprisonment and has gone down in history as Spain's first recorded serial killer. Jean Grenier During the spring of 1603, the farming villages of Gascony, France were under siege. Children were mysteriously vanishing, sometimes when they were accompanied by friends. And even in one case, a baby was snatched from its cradle and never seen again. Then one night, 13-year-old Marguerite Portia came home covered in blood. Her wounds were so savage, her family thought she'd been mauled by a wolf. After calming down, Marguerite assured them that her attacker had been a boy of around her age, who had come bounding from the forest like an animal to attack her, but she managed to fend him off with a stick before he could kill her. Just days after this incident, 14-year-old Jean Grenier confessed to his town that he was in fact the one behind the carnage. Jean was immediately arrested and he told the jury that he had been given a wolf pelt and whenever he wore it, he suddenly felt the urge to hunt and prey upon children. Jean was ruled to be insane and was locked up for life at the friary, a gentle fate for someone who had committed such heinous crimes and caused mass terror in the farming villages of Gascony. Peter Stuber Peter Stuber was born in the 15th century in the quiet farming community of Rhineland in Germany. At the time, nobody could have predicted that he would become known as the werewolf of Bedburg. From 1564 to 1589, Peter claimed 18 victims, all women and children, whom he horribly mutilated with his own bare hands and teeth. 
In some cases, he partially ate his victims raw. He would also kill livestock in the same manner. When he was eventually captured by the authorities, he was tortured into confession and told his captors that he had practiced black magic from a very young age and that the devil himself had given him a belt which allowed him to transform into his words, a greedy, devouring wolf. Peter was publicly executed in an exceedingly brutal fashion. His flesh was first peeled from his body with red hot pincers. All of his bones were then broken with an ax handle and finally he was beheaded. As a warning to any other potential werewolves, Peter's head was engraved with a wolf sign and placed on a post. The Beast of Gévaudan. Unlike the other entries in this list, the case of the Beast of Gévaudan is unique in werewolf history because it does not center on a serial killer with delusions of being a monster. The culprit in this case really was a beast, an unknown creature that committed more carnage than any of the previously mentioned werewolves combined. The story begins one night in 1764 within the French farming village of Gévaudan. A girl tending to her family's cattle saw a horrifying creature walk out of the forest towards her. Luckily, the cattle charged the beast, keeping it at bay. The animal went on to rip through the region, killing men, women, and children, tearing people to pieces, and in one case, tearing a girl's head clean off in one bite. Not only did the beast not act like any animal the villagers had encountered before, but it also looked completely different too. Those who managed to escape with their lives described the beast as looking like a wolf, but being the size of a cow, with thick red fur and massive fangs. The beast killing spree became so severe that eventually King Louis XV sent professional wolf hunters to end the nightmare. Though many wolves were killed in the hunts, the beast itself eluded capture, leading one of France's most prominent wolf hunters to state to the king, this beast is no wolf. In the two years since it had emerged, the beast had killed 113 people and injured 30 more. Until one day, it was finally shot by a local hunter straight through the heart with a silver bullet. However, the story only gets stranger. No definitive answers have been brought forward on what the beast truly was. There are two conflicting theories as to what happened to its body. The first says that villagers burned it and the second, that it was stuffed and put on display in a museum, but due to its vile stench, it was thrown out. There are many theories about what the beast was, and unsurprisingly, some consider it to be a historical documentation of a real life werewolf. What do you think? So that's five terrifying tales of real life werewolves. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.